Hello everyone, good to see you all again. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Nearly there, nearly got the 10,000. Thanks very much for the support that uh, you've all given. I'm gonna probably do the draw for the Olight torch somewhere during the video, so do stay tuned. But remember, like and subscribe if you can. I'd really like to get that 10,000 mark up. If you thought that the giveaway of the Olight was good, then you ain't seen nothing yet. Should I hit the 10K subscribers? There'll be lots of prizes. <laughs> God, it sounds like bribery. <laughs> anyway, it's a make it video this time. I love different styles of fire lighting and my favorite is just using a simple ferro rod and some sort of easy lighting tinder. But I've got quite a few ferro rods and I'll show you what I've got in a minute, but I've always liked the thought of having a very personalized one, maybe with a holder as well. So I'm going to have a go at making that now. I'll show you what I've got so far. These are a few of the ferro rods that I've got. This is from Bigfoot Bushcraft. It's great. It's got a good handle on it. I can't remember where that's from, but it's a really excellent ferro rod with the sort of thumb holder on it so you can hold it nice and steady. That's just a bare one that I'm hoping to do a bit of work with shortly. This is a magnesium block with also the ferro rod on the side and uh, a smaller style one as well. Oh, and the Bigfoot Bushcraft one um, has the striker as well, just like this magnesium block. So those are the ones I've got, but I don't know if you remember when I made my first knife, I'll put a link up in the description box, but I made a bit of a hash with the handle, the first handle as in that I drilled the pins in the wrong place. So I was left with a little bit of wood, really nice cherry wood actually, with the liners attached, doing nothing. I initially threw it in the bin in disgust and then I retrieved it thinking I might use it for something else. And I'm going to, the little bits just look like that, um, I've, I've chopped off a piece from that, but that's some cherry wood there. And I also had some brass bar. I think that's about sort of three millimeter brass bar from another project going spare. And so what I've done rather than make this video all about attaching liners and putting sort of epoxy and so on in places, I thought I'd skip that bit and what I've, made so far it's just a little block it's that cherry wood there but i've got the red liners in that were already there from the handle that i made but i've sandwiched in a piece of brass and i've just squared off the edges to get a little bit of um, a shape to it so that i can go a little bit further with the working and the shaping of a ferro rod handle so that's what i'm working with and I'm hoping to use this ferro rod here, which is about 12 centimeters long and about uh, 12 millimeters, 1.2 centimeters in diameter. And what I've done so far with the ferro rod is just chamfered a collar on there using a small metal lathe. So there's the end of the ferro rod and there's the handle I'm gonna drill a hole it's about nine millimeters in the handle there and then i will glue the ferro rod in place but i'll only glue it in place once i've got a basic shape to this handle which i haven't quite decided on yet but once i've got the hole drilled i'll probably just sketch something to cut out on the bandsaw and then shape on the grinder you can use hand tools for this. What you'd need would be a hacksaw that would cut through brass. Brass is a soft metal, so it wouldn't be too much of a job. And you'd also need a selection of files and wet and dry paper in order to shape uh, this as well. But it's not out of the question that you could do it uh, by hand, but I'll just use the tools that I'm lucky enough to have here in the, uh, in the garage. Okay, a quick interlude. This will show whether my subscriber base are really watching. This is the draw to see who has won the Olight Baton 3 Premium Edition torch that I reviewed in the last video. I, I'm using two phones here, so that's random comment picker. I'm pasting the URL. I'm getting rid of duplicates. And I'm getting the YouTube comment. I'll tell you what, I'll actually do a 
screen recording. So that's the easiest thing to do. <laughs> and then I'll just uh, chop to the screen recording. I've got uh, comments 424, getting rid of the duplicates, and I'm going to press start on the random comment. In fact, I'll do screen recording. Three, two, one, get rid of that. And I'll do start and we'll go to screen recording now. <laughs> I recognize this name and I'll just, <laughs> Malcolm Toombs, how very kind. That's just brilliant. I think Malk is a Instagram subscriber as well as very supportive of the YouTube channel. So it's, it's nice to see his name up there. Um, he says, I'm in. That looks an amazing torch and so compact. Thought it was a hip flask as well. A few people have mentioned that, uh, Malcolm. Thanks for the giveaway. Someone will be well pleased. Well, someone is hopefully well pleased. And that's you, Malcolm. Great channel fella. <laughs> well, Malcolm, if, um, if I got you right, yes, um, either get my email off Instagram or it's in the description below. Really well done for winning. Send me an email and I'll send the torch to you. So I just want to make a hole as central as possible on the handle here. I'm going to use a carbide drill bit to get through the metal a small bit and then I'm going to increase the size gradually so that I work up to the nine odd millimetres I need to house the ferro rod. That's the whole drill which nicely takes the ferro rod with a bit of space so that the epoxy can get into the pocket and I've drawn a centre line on the handle now so that I can begin to start the shape the handle and what I'm going to do is just have a slope towards a sort of a domed top there. I'm not actually going to use the bandsaw because I think I'll just be using the grinder just to take off that sort of a shape. Sorry, just on my phone at the moment, lots of dust around. Ah! <laughs> Not the end of the world. Um, I think the heat from the sanding process has melted the epoxy, which I obviously haven't made enough sort of abrasive surfaces here for it to uh, stick to it enough. So I'm going to drill some little divots in here and here so the epoxy can get a grip and <laughs> re-glue that piece. So yeah, a little bit of a pause in proceedings whilst I <laughs> re-glue that. <laughs> there it is then, to be continued. Got to give that uh, <laughs> 12 hours to set or so. So I'll have to get on with some other jobs and uh, speak to you when it's set. It's another day, another jumper. Yep, yeah, this is now glued hopefully in place and what I'm going to do now is just go through the various grits on the sanding belt and I want to get the face here up to show standard because once I've put the ferro rod in and glued it then it's going to be very difficult to get in there and get the finish that I want. So yeah I'm going to knock off these hard edges with the belt grinder and then begin some, well I'll probably glue it in place then and then begin the hand sanding.
Right, it's the next day now. That's glued and fixed in nice and securely. One thing that I forgot to do, and I maybe should have done it before I fix this in, but I don't think it matters that much, is I want to put a brass tube in there for a bit of paracord or, or leather cord. I haven't decided yet. So I'm going to do that now. Just going to use some Gorilla Glue here. It's a bit fast setting. A little bit on the brass. While that last bit of glue is drying, I'm going to start working on the leather holder for the ferro rod. And what I've done is I've wet formed a piece of about four millimeter thick leather there. And the way I've done that is used my ferro rod as the former. And I soaked this piece of leather for about 10 minutes or so in water and then molded it around the ferro rod and left it for about 24 hours to dry. The trouble is I end up with these two tram lines because the pieces of wood I used were, I should have maybe used them a bit wider, but I'm going <laughs> to use them as uh, stitching lines. So it, it should work out okay, but I'll learn a lesson for the future too, that when you're wet forming, you can't get rid of the marks that you make. So I've got this piece of leather, I've got a slightly thinner bit here, which I'm going to fold over and stitch to the back. I'm going to dye the leather first. I want to get a, a sort of a dye as close as possible to this handle colour. I'm just going to use a piece of antler. I've got some leather cord here, which is great. I'm going to drill a couple of holes in the antler here uh, to make it into a toggle. I've got some leather glue and somewhere I've got some dark tan dye, which I'll use now. There we are, it's not the most orthodox shape, but I've been through the, the grits now and I don't know if you can tell, I've just got to clean the tube out there, but it feels like glass. I've been up to 1200 grit on the sandpaper and it really does feel nice. It's, as I say, it's an unusual shape, maybe not what I planned, but I think I actually quite like it. The edges are nicely round off, the brass has come up fantastically look at that and I think it's gonna look pretty nice because the wood isn't stabilized and what that means is it's it's prone to maybe getting cracks um, as it dries out and stabilized wood it's a procedure that I don't quite understand but I think it involves a little bit of a vacuum and uh, impacting the grains with with resin so it never ever cracks but this isn't stabilized, but the best I can do is this is a mixture of 70% boiled linseed oil and 30% white spirit. And I'm just gonna pop that in there now. Look at that. <laughs> and I'm gonna let that soak for 24 hours. And that'll get as much of the grain that I've hopefully sanded down to an almost glass finish, but it'll hopefully just impregnate the grain with a bit of protection. <laughs> just look at that, isn't that a lovely finish? I soaked it for probably about 30 hours in that uh, white spirit and boiled linseed oil mix and it's it just feels fantastic. You can already tell that that grain has nicely been uh, filled and, and protected. I think I'll do it every once in a while just to keep it nice. But in the meantime, whilst that was soaking, I just trimmed down these two bits 
of leather after I dyed them a second time actually. They may be a bit darker than I'd want. We'll see how it looks. If, if so, then I can make another one. But I've decided to make this into both a belt carry and have the ability to hang it around your neck. I went for the belt carry option because it's, you know, it's a pretty substantial bit of kit and <laughs> it might weigh a bit heavily on the, on the neck, bouncing around and so on. So it's going to look something like that. And I'm going to do some stitching down these lines here, stitching in towards the formed bit, stitching outside the edges. And then I'm going to use a rivet to um, attach it in the bottom corners here um, and that should be pretty much done so yeah we're cracking on get on with the leather work now I'm just going to use some of this Tocanelli cream now to burnish the edges of the bits of leather. It just makes them smooth, chops off these sort of hard edges and makes them all sort of shiny smooth and very, very hard. This stuff's great. It costs more than Elon Musk's tax bill, but I think it's the best for the job. This has had the leather bond glue on it and I've just given it about five or ten minutes to get sort of touched dry, which it is. It's really a backup because I'm going to be stitching this on as well, but I just wanted to make sure it's extra strong. So I'll fix this in place. In the end, I've used my two pieces of wood actually to give it more of a uniform pressure across the leather to help it bond. You can use this pricking iron, I've got a selection of them to just make some nice looking stitch lines down here and then I'll have a go at stitching the thing up. I've got my piece of work in my stitching pony here and you've seen me do saddle stitch a number of times with other projects. So I'm not going to talk you through this, but just one piece of thread, needle at each end, and yeah, just get to work. Right, the next job I'm going to do is fold this over and get a couple of copper rivets in there so that will be nicely formed as a belt loop and then I'm just going to work on my little bit of antler that I've got to get that nicely buffed up and shaped for the sort of retaining cord. All these lovely copper rivets there. One in there. There we are. There's quite a lot of the pin left there, so I'm just going to snip about half to three quarters of that off and then use the doming part of this to finish it all off nicely. I'm just giving it a coating of this, the wax I use actually on my walking boots. Um, and once I've given it a nice, really thick coat of that, I'm just going to get a hairdryer on it and melt it down so it gets into all the pores of the leather. And then when I've done that, 
I'm going to finish it off with a bit of Carnuba cream. I keep thinking it Carnuba cream. It's actually called Carnuba cream, which you've seen me use before, and that will be the the finished product. I'm starting to get a bit shaky because I, I I think it's going to be a a nice result, um, which is great. Okay, upstairs. I'm not going to bring the hairdryer downstairs. I'm going to go and uh, steal it from. Uh, wife's part of the bedroom <laughs> and get that uh, melted in. So that's come up really nicely with the wax that I use for my walking boots. I've warmed it up and worked it in and given it a nice polish and now just the finishing touch with this Carnuba cream. So that has buffed up fantastically. Next I want to do is put the ferro rod in. That's a nice snug fit. Oh yeah, that's really good. Quite tight. <laughs> have to work on, have to use it a lot to start with. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put this bit of antler on. I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's have a look and loosen it off. There we go. And it, it's quite a tight fit at the moment, but with use, it's gonna loosen off. And there she goes. I'll just finish off with the recording on my phone. It's just so dusty in here after that <laughs> antler massacre. And so there it is. I'm. Please just punch with that. Loosens off. There's a ferro rod. Made the handle out of that lovely piece of cherry, brass and red liners. You know, it didn't go to waste after my knife handle disaster. Nice little leather holder for it. In she goes. There. Neat little antler toggle on it to hold in place. Oop, don't want to drop it. I'm absolutely pleased as punch with that. <laughs> Very little else to say. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't too detailed and boring in, in places. I love making stuff. I've always wanted a sort of custom ferro rod and now I've got one. It'll hang neatly off my belt and uh, I look forward to using it. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me again. Please, if you do like these videos, give it a thumbs up and subscribe very nearly there on the 10,000. And it'd be just fantastic to hit that milestone. In the meantime, have a good one and I'll see you again. This video is a make it. Why is that? Why is that? There's just no reason why that would do that.